church. How are you? I did a quick lap out the back there and half the church left. When the kids went, did you see that? The kids left and leaders went and parents gone and I did a lap around the cafe and ran them all back up again and said to, said to come back in the church. Hey, is that a good idea? What do you reckon? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you're here the first time today, as you've been welcome today, welcome again this morning to the house of God. It's great to be here, isn't it? What a beautiful morning. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Where's Tom? How you going, son? All right? Yeah. You want to come down here for a moment? Just while he's coming. Who's ready for the word today? Anybody? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Are you here ready for the word this morning? Yes. We've had a truckload already, and that's wonderful, isn't it? Of God's word. Someone say God's word is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Just as Tom's coming, I'm going to just um, read this song that Jane mentioned before. It's on the basis. Just you stand in here. You all right? You're doing pretty well for young fellow. How are you looking? Is he looking all right? Yes. Tom's come to us. Uh, Pretty horrendous ordeal, and uh, he's resting in the back of the big church. We're going to pray for him for a moment and believe God for God's continued work in his life. Isn't that great? We'll do it right now. Father, thank you for your raising up ability in his life, for his strengthening in Jesus' name, that the life of Christ flows powerfully on the inside of him. Thank you for resurrection life today. Lord, removing all the toxins, all the chemicals from his body, in Jesus' name. Life, we speak life over every organ in his body now. Thank you for raising him up. Thank you for strength and wholeness, in Jesus' wonderful name. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Father, thank you today. Thank you that this week will be amazing for Tom. There'll be not lapses into anything other than the life of God flowing powerfully in Jesus' name. Thank you that his mind has continually been renewed by the truths of God's word. And he lives in that place today of victory as an overcomer in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all I wanted. Just to pray for you. Say thank you to all my church family, my beautiful, beautiful church family, for all the prayers and well wishes. And say you do it on We love you all. Thank you. Right, Our dear sister here, Robin, just reach your hands towards Robin today. Father, we thank you for Robin. Lord, there's been an accident, but we thank you for resurrection life flowing through her also today. Thank you for heaven's ability working in her body and her bones. Lord, sticking them together in Jesus' name. We give you praise and honor for resurrection life. Lord, speedy recovery, minimal to no pain. In Jesus' wonderful name, we give you praise. We give you honor today to the glory of God. Hallelujah. I saw a dude worship and she wanted to just about leap out of that stroller and dance, but she said, I'll just restrain myself. And causing more damage. This is God wonderful age to be working in our lives so powerfully. Hallelujah. Dave, I heard thank you, my friend, for hosting us. Frontline men, let's give him a hand. Friday night. some of the party bikes stayed on very late to Dave, and you couldn't go to bed for a while. But Dave, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your sharing and speaking to the men over there at the at your property there on Friday night. Thank you, Wendy, Pastor Wendy, for the frontline women at Calbar. I heard, they, I heard that they all very much loved upon and had a great time of fellowship over there, so thank you for that. It's just wonderful to see the body of Christ moving together. And I'll just say this, you know, I just appreciate every one of you and the way you step up and, and participate, offer your gifts, your services, your talents, you know. This is never about a competition. It's just about the body of Christ being who you are and allowing God's love to minister and flow through you in a wonderful way. So we just appreciate it. I just love the worship team, amen, amen. as well. Let's give a round of applause this morning. And it is phenomenal that each week, thank you, Marty. I saw him in the hallway a minute ago. 
up at Kids Church today, and Rebecca, yeah. and um, thank you to your aunt for being here today. I wanted to appreciate my son-in-law for coming, yeah. my daughter, Annie, all the way from Toowoomba, Ken Beaton, they come and he plays every now and again, plays the drums, and just, he just loves being a part of this great team here at Bow Desert, so thank you to all those who participate and uh, worship God in that way, it's so wonderful to be part of the great family of God. Here he comes. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Come with us and worship in God. Hallelujah. Pastor Russ Harmon is at Barney View today, ministering down there to the little church. And um, we just pray God's blessings upon that gathering, eh? He's going to, we said last week, remember, we started to speak about the blood of Jesus. You can see the theme happening already today. He's going to preach and minister about communion down there at the service in Barney View. And isn't that wonderful that he'll be down there today and his wife Jenny will be ministering. I want to just lift up this morning and pray for Pat Morton and Mori. Pat's had uh, emergency surgery last night, I believe, or yesterday evening. And uh, who knows if God's a wonderful miracle working power. So Father, we pray for, I looked over there, they're not there this morning, someone said she had to go to hospital. Father, we pray, Lord, even as maybe some of the family may be watching online today, we pray for the ministering power of the living God to Pat's body today. Thank you for heaven's hand upon her life. We minister the healing power of the living God to her today. Whatever the situation is, we pray for strengthening, we pray for a speedy recovery, we pray for the life of God flowing in her body now in Jesus' name. We minister heaven's glory to her this day. Raise her up strong, Father. Thank you for being the comfort to Maury and other family members today. In Jesus' name, strengthen that great and wonderful family. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The life of God's flowing to you, Pat, today. Restoring, making new. Hallelujah. So Jane began to talk about a song this morning in her communion. And it's on the basis of the blood. The words go like this. Christ came as a high priest of good things to come. He carried his own blood. He entered once into heaven's sanctuary. Secured our redemption. He gave of himself an offering to God. On the basis of the blood, on the basis of the blood, I am more than a conqueror. I am a son of his love. There are no impossibilities. Just because I'm in the family, reigning through life on the basis of the blood. Hallelujah. Does, does that encourage you this morning? We sing another song this morning on the basis of the blood, or the I plead the blood. This song goes on. It was the blood. It was accepted. Our seal of redemption. The blood of our Christ, God's holy son. He brought for us a standing of eternal sonship with all its rights and privileges on the ground of his blood. On the basis of the blood, on the basis of the blood. Say with me today, I am more than a conqueror. There are no impossibilities. I'm a son of his love, hallelujah. Just because I'm in the family, reigning through life on the basis of the blood. The last verse is, the tokens of victory are before the Father. Now we have the legal right, someone say a legal right, legal right. to use Jesus' name. We are overcomers through our testimony. We now have all that his blood guarantees. Hallelujah. Isn't that phenomenal? And you know what? I just want to say today that, you know, in a matter of a few minutes or a few moments we have together, even if we take the whole service together, compile together, we can never, never, ever exhaust, even over weeks and months, to understand the greatness or the magnitude of what the blood of Jesus has provided for us. Amen. But it does us no harm and it does us no ill today to remember and even repeatedly speak of the things of which Jesus' blood brought to our lives. Amen. And to begin to understand. I know for some of us, if you pause for a moment here today, watch a moment, if you think with your natural mind, and say, why are we at church speaking about blood? It's kind of weird. It may seem strange to some. Is that right? You know, we become accustomed, those of us who re uh, attend regularly, but if you stop and pause and think with a calm 
carnal mind, we think, what good would the blood of another man do for us? Uh, it's everything, Phil. But you know, your, your natural mind would pause to think. And if you know that the church for a while has moved away from the thought or the concept of speaking much about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Because it does not make any sense to the carnal, natural thinking, other than those who have a, a great or a medical background would understand the depths of the magnitude of what the blood produces in our life, naturally speaking. How much more greater does the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ do for the believer when we make much of the blood Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, as a young person growing up, I, I, I couldn't fathom, you know, we sing about blood, we talk about blood, but it wasn't until it moves from a, a logical part of your brain and moves to your heart, yeah. the revelation of the truth of what the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has done and can do and continues to do for a believing person. Amen? Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, in a sense, it makes you cringe. I looked at um, Robert's leg here when she first arrived in the prayer this morning. And, you know, my stomach started to curl. <laughs> Anybody else ever had that sensation? Yeah. And she said hers did too. I remember going to the hospital once to see this little bubby and it was prematurely born and I looked down at a precious little, 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 little baby and my stomach began to churn again. Who knows if stomachs don't do well with blood or the sign of those medical type things, is that right? I know mine doesn't, so if somebody says, Pastor Mark, would you come and visit me in hospital? I'll say, I'll find somebody else to come <laughs> if I can. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just the way it is. But, you know, I want to share a couple of thoughts and we're just going to go back and read a couple of scriptures. But, you know, when Adam and Eve in the garden, and when most of us have a rough idea of the story back then, if you don't, you can look it up in Exodus, sorry, Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3 to start with. But you know what? They sinned against God. They disobeyed God. And there was a separation that happened where separation from God Yet God didn't leave them because he came and still spoke with them. Amen. Hello, there's grace right there. God didn't leave them, but there was a spiritual separation where they were separated from God because of the sin of the disobedience. In actual fact, it was worse than that. It was high treason, where humanity was sold out to the devil and gave him rule, gave him rule and authority in this world. But you know, the good news is, bless God, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to turn that picture around. But you know, the very first blood shed was God himself took an animal and got the skins to cover man's nakedness and to cover the shame and to cover the sin. But you know what? The old covenant talks about a covering of our sin. I just want to in brief and we'll get to expand on further. But you know what? It was not, it was, sorry, it was only covered back then. Who knows if covering's okay? But who knows a removal of sin and the nature and everything attributed to it is a greater demonstration of the power of God. And that's what we talk about when we spoke about the great I am, the one who came. James read the verse in John chapter 1 there before. Behold, he comes, the Lamb of God. Not just to cover sin, but to remove it. Hallelujah. Someone say today, my sin has been removed because I have faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in our time out west, Pastor Grace and I, let there be light. <laughs> and there was. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. It's a bit slow on the update. We were out west and um, we had the great, and I'll call it the privilege, of learning a few skills. And the skills were we learned to how to slaughter sheep for meat. It was, it's a wonderful skill to know because you know you can feed some people when you know how to do that. There's many butchers probably in the room today that know exactly how to do it. But you know to have a slaughtering for meat to eat, who knows there's a shedding of blood. And I remember the very, very first time that the, I was with the farmer who was showing me a thing or two. And he said, you know, just go and scruff that sheep in there, Mark. Grab that sheep, grab it by the head, <coughs> flip it over its back and drag it out here. I said, what do we do then? He said, just hold on to it for a moment. And you just lay it on the ground and you put your knee in, the in, the, in its 
sort of in this loins and the stomach there. And he said, you pull the head back like this. And everyone's going, oh. <laughs> I've seen it a couple of times. But you know, when you first see blood flow, who knows it's not good for the stomach? Who knows you can get lightheaded quite quickly? I'm sharing this with you because, you know, we want to not talk about blood. We don't want to think about it, but I'm talking about we're singing about it today because of the power and the great victory which the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for us. Amen. And you know what? As we did that, we take the take the sheep. My daughter's squinting. She would walk away. Dad, what are you going to kill it? I said, about now. And they'd all go, run! <laughs> and they'd leave really quickly. But you know what, you didn't but take a moment as you kneel down, pull the head back and just put the knife through, under about here, straight through and boom, like that. You all eat meat, don't you? Hello? It comes from somewhere. And for you to have your meat every morning, every night of the week, blood was shed. It flowed out, it poured out. And yes, my stomach churned. And I probably went a bit white the first couple of times. But you know what? I read in Exodus how there were approximately 600 men, plus women, plus children. And there was a night that God told Moses, he said, get a lamb for the household in Exodus chapter 12. 600,000 lambs. I've seen the blood flow from one sheep, two sheep. Sometimes we do four together to provide meat at our station years ago in one afternoon. But you're talking 600,000 slaughterings. The blood was flowing. And we sing about it today. And we're talking about the covering. We're talking about the protection. We're talking about the deliverance. We're talking about the salvation of that slaughtering produced for thou, well, then the over a million people of the children of Israel for one night. Amen. A deliverance would save. And I thought about that story. I might go back and read it in just a moment to give you the background. But you think about as that death angel, God himself, firstborn animal and firstborn child of the Egyptian households was going to lose their life in one night. But for the blood of a sacrificial lamb for a household would save a household and all those in it. Can you imagine the blood curdling screams, the horror as the angel of death came up the road of your neighborhood? Put yourself in the story today and hear the cry as people were dying by the tens of thousands. In one night, animals were dying. He said, this is a horrible story, Pastor Mark. It is but for the blood and the sacrifice of one lamb for a household. In that story in Exodus chapter 12. Can you picture it today? I am the firstborn in my family of my father and mother, David and Norma Einstein. I'd be saying if I was there in that time, Dad, <laughs> Dad, Dad, Dad is the blood on the doorpost and across the lintel of our home. I reckon I'd be out there peeking and saying, Dad, did you put the blood over our house? Dad! No, come on, we say we take it so lightly and we sing and Caleb oh, encourage us this morning, sing a song. 
saw of victory today. Hallelujah. But I would have been dead had you put the blood as I heard the blood-curdling screams and the terror of death as it moved up the neighborhood. You would be too. Because all it took was to obey and put the killer lamb Roast the meat. Eat the flesh of the meat, not boiled in water, not cooked any other way, but roasted and toasted over the fire. And in it all, Philip, not, nothing left by morning. If there was anything to be left over, it had to be burned in the fire. So there was nothing left by morning. You imagine 600,000. The streets, I don't know where they did, would be flying with blood from all those animals. And you know what? We, the church, have backed away from the communion. And yes, here we've made a time where we sort of went, let's share communion for three to eight minutes. I said last Sunday, well, we can take it all day. And talk about the communion and the Passover. But we make that time so others can have a talk and have a share too. And have fellowship around these things, amen? But we cannot back away today from the authority and the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This church has never stopped taking communion. Ever since the conception, since it was birthed in the, in the living room of precious Norman Judy Jenkinson all those years ago. Hallelujah. Come and give all a clap today. Because it's on the basis of the blood that we have the ability to be here today. Because nobody in this room is perfect. Nobody is sinless today. Not even now. But we come on the basis of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he was the sinless, spotless Lamb of God shed for humanity. Someone say it's on the basis of the blood. It's on the basis of the blood. You can find the story I've just ad libbed to you from Exodus chapter 12. Verse 3, God told Moses to speak. To all the congregation that are saying, on the tenth of the month, every man shall take himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for the household. Hallelujah. And verse 8 of Exodus 12, it says, And they shall eat of the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled all and all with water, but roasted in the fire, its head and all its, you know what, on the inside. Anyone squirming right now? I'm, I'm reading this because the church even removed the communion from the church in many locations. But I tell you what, the communion and the authority of the sacrificial lamb and that we speak and sing about it is coming back to the house of God for a very, very good reason. And the revelation, which we'll speak for weeks, not a few moments, for days we can speak about it, must come back to the house of God so we understand the magnitude of which what was accomplished through the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. It says in verse 10, Then shall let not it remain until morning, but what remains until morning you shall burn with fire. That's special right there, signifying the fire. It reads on here, Thus you shall eat it with your belt on and your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And so you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Hallelujah. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment, for I am the Lord. 
Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. For when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land. So this day shall be to you a memorial and shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And you shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Hallelujah. Verse 7, I'm into a start of verse 7. Before, and I shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they were to eat the lamb. Someone say, praise the Lord today. Praise the Lord. This is amazing, 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 uh, phenomenal. If you come with me now to Romans chapter 3, just quickly laying a foundation here today for us. Romans chapter 3, someone say it's on the basis of the blood. Romans 3, 21. It says this, reading from the Passion Translation, but now independently of the law, the righteousness of God is tangible and brought to light through Jesus the Anointed One. This is the righteousness that the Scriptures prophesied would come. It is God's righteousness, someone shout it's God's righteousness, made visible through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. And now all who believe in him receive the gift. For there is really no difference between us. We know this verse, for all have sinned and have, are in need of the glory of God. I spoke briefly, what was removed from Adam and Eve was the glory in the garden. That's why they had to be covered. And God killed an animal and covered them with the skins of the animal. Blood was shed back then. It says in verse 24, Yet through this powerful declaration of acquittal, God freely gives away His righteousness, His gift of love and favour, now cascades over us. All because Jesus, the anointed one, has liberated us from the guilt of the punishment and the power of sin. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. The story of the Exodus, of which I just paraphrased quickly, read a few verses, was a deliver uh, the, the deliverance and the liberation of a nation of people from 400 years of bondage, of slavery, of tyranny, of torment and persecution. And today... God is liberating the earth through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. More than 2,000 years ago, the Lamb of God, who gave us this righteousness as a gift, His blood was shed on a cross for us. Amen. And God flipped the switch and turned the tables on where mankind had been cursed only for the sacrifice of animals. Could, they be, could the atonement of sin be made? But thank God today. Someone say, thank God. Yeah. Thank God today through the... Otherwise, we would all be having a sheep-killing ceremony, bringing your lamb to church, bringing your goat to church, to have to pay penance and sacrifice blood to pay for your sins still today. But someone say, but thank God. Thank God, amen. Thank God. I don't know about you, but that story, and I'm just crossing to and fro because spiritually today, who knows that God's still doing the same thing and has provided the way for humanity to come back into union, to come back into communion with the Lord Jesus Christ as we come through the sacrifice of that lamb, amen? amen. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just tell you what I'm just, because time's running out, but we're paraphrasing a little bit. It's, it is no other way for humanity to come into a relationship to come into, you cannot be good enough, you cannot pray enough, you cannot worship anywhere or any other God. I break the power of the enemy today to say or the lie and deception that there are many ways to God. There's only one way to God the Father and that's through His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know you can go to jail for saying that today? Did you hear me? It's coming that place. 
that God's, and this is why we've got to get the revelation today that you have the guts and the guts to yeah. speak the truth of God yeah. unashamedly, amen, no matter what the consequence, because it's only by the basis of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ can we have union, can we even talk about how the authority or the power of God we have, it's by the basis of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have healing and deliverance for our family. No matter what the condition may be, amen. amen. I refuse to. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> Family of God today. No one. Under the hearing of my voice or the influence of you as a people of God, Jane talked about, we are the light as we go, we're the expression of God, amen. No one under the influence of you or your voice or any of our voices, man, that we have been totally liberated today because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jane said before, she hasn't shed blood. She hasn't, you know what? We have a generation that are cutting themselves because of the lie and the falseness of what society is telling them that they have to hurt themselves to appease the guilt and the condemnation and the shame that they carry. No one in the listening of my ear who has avowed themselves of the blood of Jesus has to carry any shame. Did you hear me? No one has to carry any shame, no guilt or no stain of your past life, no matter how cruel it was to you. Even today, it's on the basis of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said, to the natural mind or to the minds of the intellect out there with psychology and the greatest minds, we have the greatest minds in the world today and society finds itself at the lowest place it's ever been in world's history as people are struggling to keep their mind in the right place because of the shame, the guilt and the condemnation is at its peak right now ever in history. The answer is with you. And it lies with me today. It's on the basis of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone say it's on the basis of the blood. We're not going to get very far today. I can see that. But we're getting somewhere. I'm going to say we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. I think I wanted to be up to verse, let me read verse 25 from the New King James Version. It says, Whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood. Some say that's a big word, Pastor Mark. Propitiation means mercy seat. It means a place where the blood was sprinkled on the mercy. Who thinks we need some mercy? It was the mercy seat which is where righteousness was produced, I mean, because the blood was shed there. I'll just read on for a moment. Whom God set forth as a propitiation, setting Christ forth by his blood through faith. The King James Version says through faith in his blood to demonstrate his righteousness because of his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed. Someone say praise the Lord for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 25 in the other passion says, Jesus, God-given destiny, was to be the sacrifice to take away sins, and now he is our mercy seat. Because of his death on the cross, we come to him, to Jesus Christ, for mercy, for God has made provision. Someone say God has made provision. For us to be forgiven, hallelujah, by faith, in the sacred blood of Jesus Christ. By faith in the sacred blood of Jesus Christ. This is the perfect demonstration of God's justice. Hallelujah. Because until now, he had been so patient, holding back his justice out of his tolerance for us, 
So he covered over the sins of those who had lived prior to Jesus' sacrifice. Verse 26, And when the season of tolerance came to an end, there was only, there was only one possible way. Someone says there's only one possible way for God to give away his righteousness and still be true to both his justice and mercy. It was to offer up his own son. So now, someone say so now. So now we stand on the faithfulness of Jesus and God declares us righteous in his eyes. Hallelujah. God declares us righteous in his eyes. 27. Where then is there room for boasting? Someone say there is not. Do our works bring God's acceptance? Someone shout no. Not at all. It was not our works of keeping the law, but our faith in his finished work that makes us right with God. Yeah, this is liberating stuff, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know, and you know too, how many Christians have struggled with shame, guilt, and condemnation for a large part of life. And I refuse that this church, Harvest Point Church of the Desert, is not a church that preaches shame, it does not preach guilt, it does not put anybody in condemnation, but it preaches the law of liberty, of the righteousness of God, that through the faith in the blood it's not more psychology it's not more counselling to you it's faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ it doesn't just cover your old life, it doesn't just smooth over those sins of the past, but it totally eradicates your history and the people that suffer with shame and guilt and condemnation is because this revelation hasn't gone from your brain to your heart, and I'm preaching a strong today because it's dropping today from your head to your heart, that by faith, I'm going to say by faith. we are saying this morning, it's by faith in the blood. Faith has two elements to it. Faith has two elements to it. Faith is believing, and faith is speaking. Does that make sense today? So it's not just other attributes of your journey in life. It refers to the blood as well. So it's believing in your heart and speaking with your mouth that Jesus' blood has removed. Someone say removed. removed. You know what we do sometimes in some songs that we've written where it talks about covering your sin. That's not quite correct. We humor the songwriter because we know what they mean. Amen? Can we say that today? Because there's mercy and grace for them also. But you know what? The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't, doesn't in this dispensation of God's grace, it doesn't just cover, but it removes. Oh, I'm getting excited. Oh, hallelujah! In the weeks to come, we're going to talk about 12 things. You say, Pastor Mark, it's 11.02 now. And you haven't even mentioned one thing. So maybe that's 12 weeks to go. Of just, and that's just some of the benefits of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you get today, you have to live not a, you say, Pastor Mark, but I feel. Let me help you. Let me help you. Would you allow your pastor to help you today? It doesn't go by what you feel. It's what you believe. It's what you believe that releases the supernatural truth and the manifestation of what Jesus Christ did on that cross to be released in your life, it doesn't start with a feeling. The feelings will come after, but it starts with a belief on the inside. Mm. Hallelujah. I've told us before, but as a young boy, standing beside the stove, 
in Waterfalls Road, Nambour. As I said to my father, I said, what do I have to do to make sure that my eternity is secure? How do I know if I'll go to heaven and dad stay on the other side of the upright oven stove in our, da in our downtown Nambour, which I drove past the day to check it out, and it looks like a mess. <laughs> the old house. Because dad stood there. He said, son, but if you believe in your heart and speak with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. He never said to me, son, don't you feel saved? He never asked me how I felt. He said, Mark, if you will believe in your heart what God said about his son here, and you speak with your mouth what God said about his son here, and we've been singing about it this morning, hallelujah, you shall be saved. And the revelation is that the I, what I did was I availed myself of the shed blood of that sacrificial lamb to the glory of God. And I've had to keep reminding myself through my teenage years, through my young adult years, through my married life, through my journey today and probably tomorrow and next year and the year after, God willing, I'm going to remind myself of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and how it has, because the adversary, the accuser, says he comes and tries your brain continually to remove that truth from your life. Man, now I feel saved. Did anybody here feel saved? Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. And I tell you, I didn't start out feeling saved. It was on the basis of that I believed in my heart and I spoke with my mouth. And Carla shared today, I'm not sure where she is right now, but she talked about it. She said, I hear a sound coming from Harvest Point Church. Tiana's been leading us so powerfully and Marty and the team. We hear a sound coming out. You say, oh, what's all this noise, Pastor Mark? Listen, I tell you what. I've decided that this is a good place to let your voice come forth, amen. amen. You know what? Um, I tell stories again. Gracie, my lovely wife, Pastor Grace, she learned to shout in the sheepyard. <laughs> she learned to release her voice. Amy's over there making more faces again today. She knows full well. But you know what? The voice that was coming from Pastor Grace in the sheepyard wasn't a good voice. She's not in. You can ask her. There was language about coming, coming from her mouth that wasn't conducive to being Pastor Grace. <laughs> But she was Pastor Grace to the church at Charleville, but there were still things that come from her mouth. <laughs> I know, she's been to the women's camp at St. George last weekend, and she's talked about Pastor Mark and told stories. Is that right, Jane? <laughs> Your lips are sealed. <laughs> can I... Can I... Encourage you, church. Say, I'm going to wrap up in a moment. We haven't even got to the first point. <laughs> but can I say to this today, and this is purely an encouragement to you today. Can I exhort you? Can I? Can I cause you? Can I draw you in today? Some of you, the only time you've exercised your voice was to scream at the dog, <coughs> yell at the children. Don't do that. Leave the children alone. That's right. <laughs> that sometimes we've been forced to release voice in those occasions. But can I encourage you today? Bring that voice to the household of faith and begin to release voice in faith and honor to the living God and give him praise and give him honor. Amen. I'm not talking about yelling at God or to God, although sometimes you've probably done that because you feel utterly frustrated, amen. I'm not talking about we've learned to yell at the TV. <coughs> Phil Dibrose tells me he wants to throw things at it at times. We've, 
yell at the TV when the bag of wind has been kicked around the field, or the kids are doing something wrong, or the dog's not doing the right thing. Well, you know, can we can we take that voice today and say, well, I can use it there. Why can't I use it here today, man? And give God praise and give God a voice that we say, Father, we put faith today. That when we say this song, I plead the blood. Ever say, I plead the blood. Let me just give you something else to take home today. That word is synonymous with, I have faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an Old Testament word, I plead the blood. It's a legal, legal body which means I put, I place authority, I put my trust, I put my dependence upon the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know that story of the Exodus where they had to take a lamb for a household and eat the flesh and cook it up barbecue style, hallelujah, and eat it all that morning. But the blood was shed for a covering, for a deliverance, for a freedom, for, a, for a, an exodus from bondage and tyranny and slavery. And you know what? Jesus Christ has given us an exodus today from bondage and tyranny and slavery to that thing which is called sin and death. Amen. And because Jesus Christ trumped it all through his blood, we too who have faith in the blood, which means we believe it in our heart and we speak it with our mouth to the glory of God. My mother here, as we would ride our push bikes to school on a Midday morning, she said, I plead the blood of Jesus over them boys as they go today. I plead the blood. And we go, Mom, what are you doing? Slinging blood everywhere. <laughs> but you know what? Listen, it kept us safe thus far, didn't it? Hallelujah. Yeah. I, I should tell you what I did. You know what we used to do? My brother and I, Andrew, you know, the, you know the, that worship one, that singer, that fellow? We would ride our push bikes and we'd get behind the school bus and we'd hold on to the bumper bar. And we would save our legs a few calories or two. And coming up in Nambour, we did up in the hospital. We never went to the hospital. Because Mama would plead the blood. She said, I plead the blood of Jesus over them boys as they ride their bicycles. Come on, parents, grandparents, say, you do not, no one here needs to live with fear for your children or your grandkids today. As the world gets more depraved and more depraved, 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 what do you do? You take your family and you hold them before the Father God and say, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them. Amen. If it, a lamb, a sheep, a natural sheep, if it can save a household back in the book of Exodus for the children of Israel, it can certainly you, it can liberate you. Amen. And keep you. Well, the good story is that our brother, me and brother, we never did fall off. And the bus never ran over us. We had a lot of adrenaline running. Uh, yeah. Some of you let your kids have a bit of fun. And plead the blood. We had push bikes. My three children, two daughters and a boy, they had motorbikes. And Mama Grace would plead the blood. Someone say, we have faith in the blood today. I'm going to put this out there. Just one more bit of the message I haven't preached yet. <laughs> Dr. Dave. I'm impressed that you're here this morning. You'll be impressed with my knowledge. You better be. I want you to tell me after. 
How impressed you were. Dr. Dave Ahern. Under the microscope, the composition of blood has four main parts. Plasma, 55%. It transports vitamins, proteins, hormones, so as that we are fed properly. Isn't that wonderful? Red blood cells, 45%. Of 100% blood, transports oxygen, removes carbon dioxide from our bodies. I'm sharing this today as we leave because as we put the blood of Jesus under the microscope, we're going to find out it's more than just red stuff that runs through your veins, through our veins. And I stand to be corrected, but this is just a brief overview of what I found out, Dr. Dave. There are some white blood cells in there, 1%. They are for the defense of infection. They're like soldiers. They're like warriors that attack foreign invaders. They rally together against intrusion in your life. And the rest is made up of platelets, which primarily arrest and stop bleeding and aid and repairing the wound. God has made provision for us, not only through our natural blood, but through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, to do exactly that for every person here spiritually today. Amen. Isn't that powerful? The blood of Jesus is precious, it's spotless, it's sinless. The blood of the Lamb of the living God. The blood ran down the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that blood was accepted in heaven before the Father and for all mankind. And when Jesus cried out, it is finished. The veil was torn from the top to the bottom. And Almighty, grabbed, well, Almighty God sorry, grabbed the Old Testament system of animal sacrifice and said, no more goat, no more sheep and no more calves needed anymore. Hallelujah. You know what he was saying really? And you know this is, it's still alive today. He's saying no more dead religion. Someone shout no more. Because the life is in the blood. We know that life technically is spiritual, but the life is in the blood. Hallelujah. And the life that, I mean, you take it. I, I've done it with a sheep. You put the knife in there, that sheep just fades away. And not a sound does a sheep make. Just as Jesus was led as a sheep before the slaughter, he uttered not a sound. But gave himself up. As we stand today, this is just like the introduction to the precious blood. The precious blood of Jesus. Someone say the precious blood of Jesus. I want to release you today, but I just know that as a even the early the service with the team of worship, there's healings in the house today. Because it's in the blood, amen. Healing's available for you today because it's in the blood. Deliverance is available to you today because it's in the blood. Release of bondage today is available. Release of addiction today is available because it's in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Father, we stand before you today this great day the last Sunday of August and declare how precious, how precious is the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray today that no one leaves here going, oh, you know, I, I have never felt what Pastor Mark talked about. I, that was never my experience. Can I say to you today, that doesn't mean what I'm talking about is wrong or incorrect. 
It just means that there's a greater level of, under, of revelation. There's a greater level of heartfelt intimacy that's available for every person today. It's available for any person today to partake of the greatness and the magnitude of the grace of God <coughs> given to mankind through His only begotten Son, spotless, sinless Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. It becomes real. It becomes tangible. It becomes felt. Mark my words, I'm not, ex not denying feelings. It becomes felt as you put faith in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe here this morning in our presence or watching online, say, Pastor Mark, I've never known the full release of my sin forgiven. I've never known the surety of salvation. I've never known the certainty of heaven as my permanent destination or my, what I mean by that, what I say that is being with God in His presence forever. Perhaps you've never known that. It's a multifaceted salvation that God offers through His Son. And while we live here and now on this earth, it's freedom, liberty, a life lived without shame, without guilt, and without condemnation. Because God didn't send Jesus to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask a question this morning before we, before we move on. Is there anyone here today who says, Pastor Mark, I've never failed myself. I've never received of this cleansing power of which you speak about this morning. Kayla, she was early on how three people with Dylan sharing in Sydney last night received salvation through acknowledging the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you're here today, you say, Pastor Mark, I'd like to receive that forgiveness. I'd like to know that my deliverance is assured and that my eternity is secure through the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. If you're here, perhaps you brought a friend, say, Pastor Mark, simply raise your hand quickly right now in an act of I'm surrendering, I'm yielding, giving my life to Him this day. Anybody at all in Jesus' name? Anybody at all in this room today? The precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, church. Thank you for believing, uh, believing people here today. Many Sundays, the people here that receive Christ, we thank God for them, amen. We thank God for their faith. I pray that you carry this truth with you to this week, everywhere you go. This message of deliverance and freedom is to be flowing through you today in Jesus' wonderful name. Father, we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing in this house today in Jesus' name. We give you all the praise. I felt this morning as I came to the service that there'd be one or two people and the Holy Spirit particularly put the word in my heart today, depression. There were thoughts that were trying to bombard you. I don't want you to be embarrassed about that because there's support here today. There's, there's, there's uh, faith and there's prayer for you today to strengthen you in your faith walk in Jesus' name. If you're here today and you find that that's been buried down upon you, some of the team here would happily pray with you this morning and just believe God that, for that deliverance for your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we give you praise, we give you honour to the work. I feel the closer right now. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for the message. Thank you for the life of God flowing in this house. Lord, as we look towards next Sunday, thank you for the youth and young adults as they share here from this platform. Next Sunday, we look for the anticipation, Lord, with great expectancy, what you'll do 
as you flow through them on Father's Day. We give you praise. We give you honour in Jesus' wonderful name. Everybody shout it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you'd like prayer for anything this morning, quickly come this morning as a, as a team leader. Thank you, guys. Let us worship with the song. Let's celebrate Jesus as we go today. God bless you. Have a lunch outside. Grab you quickly. Go to the cafe. Have some lunch. Have some tea, coffee together. God bless you. Don't forget to feed the flame tonight here. 6 p.m. Come